In this video, we're gonna walk through cleaning the bird chamber of your EK43 grinder and replacing the shear plate. The tools that you're gonna need for this are an adjustable pliers, a needle nose pliers, screwdriver, Sharpie, food grade grease, uh, we recommend super lube, and then your replacement shear plate. I'd recommend that before you start doing this process, just to have a replacement shear plate on hand, even if you don't think you're gonna replace it, just in case the one that's inside is already broken. Um, that way you will definitely be able to put everything back together and have it working again. Before we start this process, you're gonna to wanna to unplug the grinder. Then we can take our screwdriver and remove these two screws on the faceplate. Um, then the whole faceplate is gonna come off. So just loosen these up a little bit and then hold the faceplate with one hand while I remove the screws. And the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is to mark where the shaft is um, in comparison to the burr carrier here. Um, essentially, I just have one side of the shaft marked with Sharpie and then the corresponding side of the burr carrier um, just scratched a little X in there just so we can put this back the exact same way that um, we take it apart. And that does matter for the alignment of the grinder. Um, so if you just do that now, if there's any grease on there, you can kind of um, take out the shear plate, wipe off the grease, make a mark with your Sharpie and then uh, scratch a little X into that burr carrier. Then we can remove the shear plate. And as you can see, the shear plate just locks this burr carrier in with the shaft. Um, and that essentially just makes it so that if, if any part in the grinder is being stressed, um, that this shear plate is just gonna break. So its job is to break um, rather than to put stress on the burr carrier or the shaft. So once we remove this shear plate, um, yours might be broken, in which case then we'll obviously need to replace that. And you can take your adjustable pliers and just grip this lip on the burr carrier and pull it out. If this spacer and screw pops out with the burr carrier, you can just push it back in place. So once you take that burr carrier out, you have access to the outer burr and the inner burr. If there's coffee in there, if you had a clog or something, you'll be able to either sweep that out or shop back it out um, and clean everything up. You don't necessarily need to open this up for cleaning as a preventative item. It's mainly if you're experiencing a clog or um, something happens that you need to clean out the burrs and stuff. Um, for preventative cleaning, you can just clean out the chute here. That's really all that you need to do. And um, if you're taking this all apart, then uh, you might as well just clean out the grease um, on the shaft, clean out the grease inside the burr carrier and replace that with um, your food grade grease. So you can just take a rag and kind of wipe out the shaft. and just wipe out your, your burr carrier as best as you can. You don't need to get it perfectly clean, but it's best to get some new grease in there every once in a while, even if it's just every couple years that that happens. So once you get this all cleaned out, take our grease, just take a decent amount and Wipe it on the shaft, the whole way around. We can also put some on the inside of this burr carrier. Then we're gonna replace the burr carrier in the same way that we marked it out in the beginning. So my Sharpie's on the top side of my shaft here and my mark is on the top side of my burr carrier. So 
I'll just put it in like that. And you're gonna need to make sure that the slot in the shaft lines up with the two slots on the burr carrier so that you can insert your shear plate. And then we should be able to put this face plate back on. So once again, I'll just hold the face plate in place while I start the threads of these two screws. And then I'll just tighten each of these screws, alternating as I go to make sure it goes on straight. And you can kind of see around the outside edge of the face plate, um, just that it's seating against the body of the grinder and tighten those up. And the last thing I would do is before I turn on the grinder, before I plug it in, to just rotate the dial to the coarsest grind setting, go the whole way to the finest grind setting, and just make sure it doesn't feel like um, the dial is um, being restricted by anything, that the burrs are moving freely. And then uh, we can go ahead and turn the grinder on and um, sweep through our, our grind adjustment settings and just make sure there's no chirping of the burrs, uh, make sure everything's working fine, and then um, you're done. <laughs>